Okay. So first things first, how do we pass? What are the basics? Here's what I'm going to show you guys. And I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek on what it's like to be in one of our courses, our online training. So the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to screen share. Now, again, if you are watching on Instagram, I want you to head over to YouTube or our Facebook group, and we're going to share this screen now. Okay. If you are one of our members, you've probably seen this, but I'm just going to go through some of our lessons in our actual serve receive course. So you're going to get a little uh, preview as to how you do it. If you opted in, if you signed in through a page, or if you are looking for 10 free days of volleyball lessons. There's one lesson and one drill from every aspect of volleyball, passing, setting, arm swing, attacking. There are a few things that you can do right now. Okay. Number one is you can download the better at beach online app. So if you're watching on your desktop, you can get, uh, you can open up a new tab and you can go to the better at beach online app. Okay. And just for downloading that or downloading our free drill book off of our website or by opting into this webinar, what you've done is you've opened up a free 10 day course and it covers every aspect of volleyball and it comes with free workout programs, a free drill book. So all you have to do is download the Better at Beach online app. It's on Google Play and it's on the App Store with iOS. Okay. We're going to go to the second lesson because that's what we tell our members to do. Okay. And we're going to get into something called our athletic posture. Now, if you don't know, posture becomes something that's just very, very important. Okay. And I'm going to screen share this and we're just going to talk a little bit about what is important when we talk about posture, because we actually talked about this today. I was running a private lesson and one of my players, he wasn't quite activating. Okay. Now, Activation is a mental thing. So we need to focus our actual brain on saying, okay, I'm in the point, I am involved, and I am ready for the point to start. Okay. And there has to be a mentality there. So I'm actually going to stop sharing this for a second because I want to talk about this. Mentally, how do you prepare for every point? Okay. Sometimes we do everything, or we think we do everything exactly the same. And then with perfect technique, with a serve that we've seen thousands of times before, it turns into a shank. And we wonder why that happened. What was so different about my start? You have ultimate control over how you start every point. So most people do, they discuss this pre-serve routine, but they never get to the point where they're actually discussing a pre-serve receive routine. Okay. How do you start every point? What do you tell yourself? What words are you doing? What posture are you assuming? Okay. I want to make sure that when we get in there, before we even talk about how to pass, we've got to fix our mind. Okay. We do have a free tool. If you guys head over to betterbeach.com forward slash free tools, there is a questionnaire there that leads you through some important questions. And I want you to look for the one that says anchor. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up that page right now and I'll just screen share it just to show it to you. Okay. And share screen. Okay. So here's our free tools page. It's got a load of things for you. So like I said, if you opted into this webinar, then uh, you should have gotten these already into your library. All you have to do is download the app and sign in. But if you download, if you join our email list, you're going to get 36 free beach volleyball drills. Okay. You're going to get three free workouts for volleyball players. They're about 60 to 90 minute workouts, and they're specifically for volleyball. They're an introduction to our 60 day max vertical program. And you're going to get my top 10 lessons from my 10 years on the ABP. But on this page as well, we have a number of free assessments that you guys can take. So we, we've built out a whole bunch of free tools for you. Okay. One of them is called build your serve receive routine. If you have not completed this, I just recommend that you do it. It's an easy questionnaire and it leads you through 
what is your physical posture? What are you telling yourself? So what is your mantra, right? And what things work for you in serve, receive? If you can recall all of the best tips or the things that when you say this or you repeat this or you definitely focus on one part of your technique, it leads you to being better passer. This is something that you should tell yourself all the time at the beginning of every point, okay? In order to do that, I would recommend it in this order. Now, the people in our complete player program and my elite players know that we take them through this, but the first thing you want to do is use this free tool here. It's called Build a Stronger Mental Game, and that's going to help you anchor your performance, okay? Uh, We call it anchoring because it's going to lead you through an exercise where you actually recall a past performance in which you were dominant, fantastic, you were uh, absolutely just lights out. And it doesn't necessarily have to be volleyball. It can be any sport. It can be a business presentation, a dance floor, whatever that high performance state was, it helps you recall that. And it's going to put you into that state of mind and that posture before every point. So these are free tools. Go to betterbeach.com forward slash free tools, okay? And you'll be able to fill this out. Build a stronger mental game, okay? I want you guys to work on that after this training. And that's going to help you start every point in the same way and recall your peak performance flow. What postures did you have? Uh, What were you telling yourself? How was your breathing rate? What was your facial expression? So if we did these just really quickly, right, I would ask you a number of things before you actually step onto a court. If I were your coach and I were leading you through this, I would say, hey, let's recall a time where you were absolutely crushing it, right? You were very, very good on the court or in a presentation or in another sport. I would say, what was your facial expression, right? Were you kind of like angry and pissed off or were you just happy or was it just stone cold blank face? Uh, I would ask you what your breathing rate was. Were you breathing deep and heavy? Was it nice and even? Were you (laughs) kind of in and out like a little quick boppy exhale? Okay. Um, I would also ask you what you were telling yourself, if anything. Okay. What words were you repeating? And then finally, I'd say, what posture did you have? Were you standing up tall? Were you looking up? Did you have this kind of aggressive, like shoulders forward and forehead forward type posture? All of these things count. And I know that you think we're not talking about serve, receive right now, but we've got to set the foundation for a great point before we even talk about getting into the physical and um, strategical positioning of our passes. Okay. So how do you start the point? And if you find that you're not starting points with the exact same posture, with the exact same body position, with the exact same mantra and breathing rate, well, you know, you're starting behind. You've got to get those things going and you've got to assume those postures, those facial expressions, etc. Okay. So I want to make sure that that's clear and you have the ability to do that for free right now. You just go to betterbeach.com forward slash free tools and focus on the one that says build a stronger mental game. And then after that, we're going to help you build your serve receive routine, which is just above that on that page. Okay. So um, open that up in another tab, then come right back and we're going to get into some physical aspects of serve receive. All right. Now, we're going to talk about posture, okay? And I'm hoping right now that uh, it's going to share the audio from this. So uh, if you're on YouTube, if you're watching live, just tell me if the audio is working or not. And we're going to start with one of the first lessons in our full serve receive course, which is athletic posture. And I'm just going to show it to you guys. The athletic posture is one of the most overlooked but most important things that you can use to improve your beach volleyball game or any athletics. We tell kids this all the time. From the time they're three and four years old, we tell them to bend their knees and get their shoulders forward. But a lot of times we forget to do this throughout the point and we forget to stay there. And often we get surprised by plays when somebody hits on two or hits over on one. So you need to live live, live in an athletic posture. And the way we're going to do this is make sure that your feet are just outside your shoulder width. 
Certain studies have shown that 50 degree angle from your belly button to your heels is going to be the best position for an athletic posture. It's going to give you the most power in the most positions. But we want you to find a comfortable spot just outside your shoulders with your knees bent, your butt back, and your shoulders forward. From here, all you have to do is release your hands. And this is your athletic position. Make sure that you're rooted, that your core feels tight and activated. Don't just stay here and be loose because you won't be ready to move. The core has to be activated. The spine has to be tight so that when you do move, something like that doesn't happen. We don't have lag with our body, right? We move it directly with our spine so that we can be powerful and fast from the start. So the athletic posture is something you need to stay in, you need to live in, you need to move in. We've got a drill that we like to do where we just tell people to move forward, backwards, and side to side. And we're going to give those commands to them as they move quickly without getting out of their athletic position. Also, we have another defensive drill where we can have them shift according to what the hitter shows them and then be balanced. Because a lot of defenders and sometimes serve receivers, they will read something. And when they read it, they'll get out of their athletic position by lifting one foot. And we need to move and shift so that our feet stay in the same width, our knees and our butt have the same bend. The athletic posture is one of the most overlooked but crucial things to your success. Stay there, live there, watch your film, and make sure that you're never caught standing up and you're not crossing over and keeping your feet together. Get in the athletic posture. Okay, so that's one of our first videos uh, from our course, and I actually just want to talk a little bit about what that means, right? We saw the athletic posture in the video and we understand that, okay, maybe hands on the knees, bent knees are there. There are some people that feel better when they are light on the sand. Some people better who are dug in or their feet are really stable in the sand. And you guys have to explore that on your own. You have to understand where your best position is and how you move best. But for sure, We've got to stay in that forward shoulder position, okay? So we're going to discuss posture just a little bit more, and we're going to talk about a shrug. So a lot of people, now, if you're watching here and you're watching the screen online, when we're just beginning with volleyball, we end up just trying to put our arms together like this, okay? We put our hands together, and then look what happens with my arms. They stay kind of wide. They stay apart, okay? One of the things that I have to do, especially for guys and and big people who are broad chested, right? When we don't connect our shoulders and the rear delts and and everything that helps our shoulders elevate and protract, it's harder for us to get into that position. So you guys just saw that little clip of Troy Field and you saw that huge protraction and shoulder elevation. So if you're sitting at home right now and you're wondering, how do I do that? Uh, how do I get into that shoulder position? And how do I stop you know, shanking and bumping and looking like a, a barbecue volleyball player, right? Here's a quick trick that I like to use. If you guys put your shoulders up, put your hands up, and then try to get your shoulders to touch your cheeks and the bottom of your jaw, okay? Then you reach out and forward. Now, When I'm in this position, see how my shoulders are elevated and they're almost hiding my jaw, right? Now I've gotten my hands a little bit closer together. Now I can't do that from this position. From this good posture position, my hands don't want to come together as much. And people say, oh, I'm not flexible enough to do that. You might not be flexible enough to do that, okay? This is one of those positions that this is the end of my elevation and protraction range. How do we get a deeper range or a bigger range whenever we're doing anything athletic. Well, number one, if you want to be more flexible, you've got to stretch. So if you want to get your hands closer together or your arms closer together, you've got to just get into this position more. The more you stay here with your shoulders depressed and back, like good human posture, not good volleyball posture, okay, you're not going to be able to then really get your platform away from your body. So Shoulder elevation, that shoulder shrug, some people call it, and then protraction. What this helps us do is it actually helps us create more space for our platform so that we have more space from the ball. And that means that we're actually able to calibrate better. Okay. When I attach my triceps or they stick here, a lot of times my body gets sort of attached to my platform and there's no freedom. So one other good cue. 
that we like to give players is make sure that somebody can tickle your armpits. If you squeeze here and you're tight and you there's no entry into your armpit, <laughs> okay, then you're not going to have that distance from your passing. So we've got to protract, elevate. There should be space under your armpit. And what that could and should do is some people say round your upper back. I'm not really going to say that. All I'm going to say is tuck this bottom rib, the little xiphoid process or your bottom rib. I want you to actually tuck it. That's going to create this cave or a feeling like there's a ball. You might've seen some of our Instagram videos where we put uh, volleyballs under people's shirts and we say, okay, when you're passing, you're not allowed to touch the volleyballs with your arms. They're just hanging under your shirt, but you're not actually allowed to touch them because we want to find ways to increase the space from your hands to your hips when you're passing. Hand to hip distance. So if when I'm passing, my hips come forward or my chest comes up, both of those will create the same body position. My hips get closer to my hands by me standing up or me popping my chest up. That's something that I have to prevent. I have to stay here. And one of the cues that I've used that one of my players really liked was I said, look through your eyebrows when you're passing. Because if you look through your eyebrows, it's going to be hard for you to try to pop your chest up, right? I'm going to tilt my head forward and I'm going to look at the serve receive coming through my eyebrows. Hopefully that helps you stay down and that prevents this chest popping and it increases the distance from your hands to your hips, okay? Uh, I hope that's clear, but that type of posture, being able to be there with that concave chest, making sure that there's a hole right here, and getting your shoulders elevated and out front, it's so massively important for you to be able to create consistent passes, okay? So that is one thing about posture. Second thing is we do want to talk a little bit, I don't want to talk about footwork sequencing right now and actually how to get yourself to the ball, but what I do want to talk about is something that I refer to as rooting. Like you're rooting into the ground like a tree. Okay. Um, I just gave a lesson this morning and one of our players is both of his feet popped off the ground on multiple passes and defensive plays. So I said, you have to imagine that you're a big tree and your feet are grabbing deep into the ground and they're solid by the time you pass. Sometimes we are going to have one foot. All right. We're going to have one foot in the air. Okay. I get that. Right? There's not the chance to have two feet on the ground uh, for every pass. But as much as possible, we need our feet to be firm in the ground. If you've ever seen Steph Curry's masterclass on shooting, uh, on three-point shooting, one thing that he did talk about was balance. He said, if I'm balanced when I jump, then I'll be a better shooter. It doesn't mean stable. It doesn't mean that he's always jumping in a straight line. It doesn't always mean that like he's completely vertical, but... It is the feeling of getting your feet under you so that they are strong and then being able to jump where you want instead of where your body or where your momentum is just taking you. That same thing can apply to us as volleyball passers, right? When we're in serve receive, we want to make sure that we have balance and that we're rooting. So if you find that sometimes you fade away after some passes, so you pass and then you kind of fall into your next step instead of establishing your feet you're going to have inconsistency. Okay. There has to be balance and there's got to be intention in that. So make sure that when you are passing, you're getting your feet nice and rooted through your pass. We get this question all the time and we get uh, coaches who told me to pass with my legs, uh, coaches who said, no, pass with my arms, coaches who just made me sit there and hold and do nothing with my platform. Listen, there's always something to do with your platform for most balls. And th this is pretty level dependent, but the answer to how much legs or how much arms do I use when I pass, it's really just dictated on what position you're in and how hard that ball is coming. Cause for you to do nothing and just let the ball hit you, if you're like rock solid and you let a ball hit you for it to go to the right place at the right height, you have to, that ball has to be traveling pretty hard 
for it to be able to rebound high enough for your partner to have the option to jump and hit and or set you. Okay. If you do nothing on a float serve or a free ball, this is where some of those coaches, uh, something gets over applied and players get confused. On free balls and slow moving balls and float serves, we have to add something. You have to add arms. You have to add a little bit of legs or body shift. But there's never a case where we pass with only legs or we pass with only arms. Our goal is to get the ball where we need to get. And you have to be able to use some legs, some arms. Sometimes you're going to be on the ground and you can only use arms, right? And sometimes you're already going to have your angle set or you're going to be uh, passing a short ball and you're going to have to lift with arms and legs or just your legs. So get used to using all of those because there are free balls. That's probably the slowest moving ball. Then there are float serves. That's the next slowest moving ball. Then there's jump serves and spikes. Jump serves and spikes, all we have to do if somebody's hitting hard enough is block it, get in a great position, make sure we're in that posture with our feet rooted and block it. For a float serve, we're going to have to carry that ball up. We've got to lift it so that we have that option swing. Okay. And for a free ball, we're going to have to add a lot to that ball to be able to give it enough juice to get high enough for a four-step approach option um, or a jump set or just a plain set. All right. So that's the posture that we're talking about. And one of the most common ways that people get uh, out of that posture is when they see a ball up. Okay. When they see a ball up, If I see this ball floating up above me, my body kind of wants to go to it. It rises. Okay. I can't let that happen. When you're in serve receive, even if the ball's high, when you're pursuing on defense, even if the ball's high, when you're getting a free ball and it's super easy, you have to stay and run in that low athletic posture and then get yourself to the position where you can pass from that quarter squat. Okay. If you end up at the end of your range, so your legs are extended and you're passing high, that's going to be the end of your range. Okay. If that becomes your go-to or your average or your status quo with your legs extended, then that means that anything beyond that you won't be able to reach or you'll be forced into a tomahawk and serve receive, which is garbage. Okay. Um, And you won't have the ability to calibrate. Now, if my average, if my status quo is in a good squat, a good quarter squat with my hands away from me, right? Now I can calibrate with my arms. I still have plenty of space and I can extend my legs a little bit into that stand up range or I can squat a little bit deeper. So now I don't have my back against the wall. I can pass a variety of balls if I make my status quo from that quarter squat with my hands far away from me. If you let your hands come into you, right? And your triceps and your biceps are touching your pecs, okay? Or you're extended your hips or you've extended your knees. Well, then you're passing at the end of the range. And eventually, I promise you, you're going to get aced. You're going to shank a ball, okay? So I want you to make sure that that is (laughs) a part of your process, making sure that you're in that great posture. Now, how do I pass that high deep ball when it comes at my head? How do I not stand up and backpedal. Okay. If you're watching here at home, if you're like sitting, I just want you to do this. I want you to get in kind of a little wrestler stance. And all I want you to do is turn sideways and then drop your front shoulder. Okay. In order to turn sideways, I had to pick up my feet. I had to pick up my leg. If I try to turn sideways from here and my feet are locked in front of me. So I put my feet together on the ground and then I try to twist. I don't have a ton of mobility and I can't get my platform set. Okay. As soon as I open up that foot, then I can get to that position again. So how do I pass those high deep balls that are approaching me at the neck and the chest and the throat? I take a open step, but I keep my shoulders forward. I stay elevated. I stay protracted. Okay. And then I can pass that ball. The next question that we get typically right after that is, well, which side should I turn to? Hey, is there a better side for me as a coach? There's no better side. 
it doesn't matter because if the ball's on your left side, okay, you turn left and you get it on your left, but you just make sure that the angle is in front of your body. If you uh, are passing so that that ball is in your seam or in the middle of the court, maybe the ball won't be in front of your body. Maybe to get it to where you want it, you're going to have to let it get a little bit closer to you, all right, in order to be able to set up that angle. So whichever way you turn is not important to me. Okay, if you want to subscribe to, okay, you always have to turn inside the court or you always have to turn outside the court, go for it. Um, I just encourage you to watch as many volleyball matches at the highest level as possible and see what's happening because there's no preference for turning it inside or outside. It's just which way is the ball is approaching. I open up my foot that way and then I make sure that I stay in that posture. Okay, so... How can we do some of these drills? How can you do them at home? And what can you do? Number one, the, our members. So if I share this screen again, we talk about passing statistics. I'm not going to share the screen, but we talk about passing statistics and how to take statistics. And I'm going to introduce to you just a three-point passing scale. Okay. All of my elite players go through this with me in person. And we talk about it uh, week after week. But if you're not recording your matches, if you are not recording your practice matches, you're behind. Just set up your camera so that you can do this. Okay. I want you, and you can write this down as something that you can do at home, but get some matches recorded, even if they're play sets or tournament sets, it doesn't really matter. Okay. And take your last. 100 serve receives and you're going to rate them as a three two one or zero a three point pass means that it is in the front part of the court probably a little bit closer than 10 feet right somewhere between three feet and 10 feet if you want to know we always recommend that our players pass at six feet from the net is a perfect pass at three feet Yes, technically, but if you keep aiming at three feet and then you miss by a foot, a foot and a half, your setter is going to be in the net and they're going to have to do some funky stuff just to get you a good set. So for us, okay, we like to pass every ball six feet from the net because if you pass it nine or 10 feet, you're still golden. The ball's still in front of you. It's still in the front half of the court. You're going to have a great offense. Okay. Uh, if you pass it three feet, then it ends up even a little bit more perfect. Uh, so we've got that bell curve where six feet works out nice. Okay. Now a three point pass is somewhere, we'll call it between 10 and three feet, high enough for your partner to be able to either take an approach and spike or set the ball. We want to keep current with what's happening in volleyball and we want to be prepared for that next level. So if you want the best version of your passing to exist, you need to make sure that you are passing a ball that's high enough for your partner to be able to jump and hit. Now, if your angles are off or if you pass too low or if it's only above the net for a second, your partner won't be able to jump and efficiently attack that. All right, so you've got to be <laughs> passing so that your partner can jump and spike if they want to. That's a three-point pass, okay? And normally, that pass ends up somewhere between us. So I'm going to give you two other numbers. So far, you've got six feet from the net, all right? Six feet from the net is a good baseline. Now, what angles should I pass off of my body, or where should that body go? We're going to start screen sharing right here, and I'm going to show you a couple of things, okay? But this is from a practice with uh, me, Logan, Weber, uh, Leela Tucker, and Kyle Friend. Do, 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 do. Okay. Now, if we talk about where to serve receive. So if we see this is Kyle serve receiving back there. Okay. He's going to try to pass to his He's a left side attacker, right? So if you're a left side attacker, you're going to try to pass to your one o'clock. So imagine straight in front of you is 12 o'clock. If you pass that ball straight in front of you, which was kind of the older mentality, I'm just going to pass straight in front of me. Okay. Uh, that's not happening anymore. So we want to get out of it. 
but I'm passing at a slight angle off of my body. And we could call it a 30 degree angle off my body, or we can just say pass to your one o'clock. If 12 o'clock is straight in front of you, one o'clock is about a 30 degree angle off of your inside shoulder. Okay. That's a pretty good place to pass to. And if you're passing as a right side, okay, and you guys can see where Leela is standing over here. If he were to pass this ball, he would choose an 11 o'clock angle or about a 30 degree angle off the inside of his body. Okay. So we've got six feet from the net. We've got one o'clock and 11 o'clock or 30 degrees off of your inside. Okay. And high enough so that your partner can jump and spike if you want. I'm telling you right now, the number one thing that changes games when we add these adjustments is passing higher. Okay. I'm not asking you guys to pass sky balls. I'm just saying six feet above the top of the antenna should be your baseline. That should allow somebody to take four very quick steps to be able to jump and spike a ball. But lower than that, if you pass at the top of the antenna or under the top of the antenna and the conditions are good and it's not windy, okay, the problem is you're not going to have attack options. Your setter is going to feel rushed. They're going to have to dart to places instead of walking there. Okay, And so you're probably not going to get the set that you want over time unless you are an absolutely stud, awesome pass on a dime passer. We all make mistakes within a certain area. Okay, whether you're pro, Olympian, B or A, right? We all make mistakes in either a smaller area or a bigger area. But if you end up passing low, that mistake is going to cost you because now your setter is going to be diving off of minor mistakes. If you end up attempting to pass a little bit higher, like six feet above the top of the antenna, okay, that's going to be a good place for you to try to aim. So if you see where Kyle Friend passes, right? He makes his pass. That's, uh, I would say, four or five feet above the top of the antenna, and it's somewhere in front of him, okay? And it's not his ideal passing location because Leela has to run out in front of him and then go. Now, Logan here is passing this ball, right? If he passes at about his 11 o'clock or 30 degrees off the inside of his body, okay, this should be optionable for me to jump and hit as well. And he really feeds it there. Okay. This time he leaves my right arm. He says, I'm definitely letting you go hit because we've got the other team off balance. And of course, because I'm a subpar player, <laughs> Leela gets a good dig on me, but he does the exact same thing for his partner, right? He's playing a defensive ball. What does he do? This isn't an accident. He feels uncomfortable. So... He is passing high, giving his partner the option to hit, giving himself time. All right. If we take a look at Kyle's pass here, this is a pretty perfect pass, right? He ends up passing off of the inside of his body, high enough for his partner to hit, a good 30-degree angle off of that, okay? Now, admittedly, this is uh, one of those fun games that we're playing. So this drill here, uh, if you're watching on our screen, on YouTube or on the Facebook group um, or in the webinar, <clears throat> what's happening right now is this drill, we have to use a anything we want for every first touch, but we have to use an open hand or a single hand maneuver for the second two touches. So yes, we are trying to enforce a great pass that allows for an option because if I have to use one hand for my second touch, okay, that means that I can jump and spike. If that pass didn't allow me to jump and spike, then I might get in trouble because since I have to use a one-handed touch for my second touch, it's probably going to be less than accurate. And that means that my third contact, whatever my buddy has to deal with after my one-handed attempt at a set He's probably not going to get the best attack in the world. So this is a very fun, I would say, warm-up drill, but a focused serve-receive drill to say, are we passing high enough so that when we pass, we can attack every ball, okay? 
And then later on, we turn that into a game so that we apply the things that we were doing here. If we did this in a drill and we played this probably for a set to 15 or so, right? But if we do this well, where we can pass optional balls to the inside of the court, then when we turn into full gameplay, guess what? Now we've got the option for an attack set up so long as they pass the exact same way and or I can then go and I can set my partner. All right. So passers. This is kind of a blanket statement. Pass higher or high enough for your partner to hit. And if you want an easy drill to do, to know if you're doing this well, here is your match. Okay. We're going to play a match against each other, right? But your first touches can be anything, which means you get to get your platform on it. Your second two touches must be using one hand, okay? If you have a good first touch, that means that you can jump and spike. If your first pass isn't good enough, that means you're probably going to get a crappy set because your setter is forced to use one hand and then you have to attack with one hand on the third ball as well. So this is a really fun drill that we did for all of preseason uh, with Cody Caldwell and Sean Cook and Logan and Hagen. Okay. It's just a good warm up drill that really dials in your passing. All right. We'll just show you one more look at it. Okay. If you're passing as a left side from a right side, now here's a little caveat, like maybe you would go beyond that 30 degree angle, because if you want to set up that option for a right-handed right sider, you might pass a little bit beyond their zone to get the ball to the right shoulder, just like Logan does here. Okay. He's got that athletic posture. His hands are together nice and early. Good. Ball's crossing. Uh, Balls and hands are together by the time the ball's like maybe 10, 11 feet from him. Okay. Most passers, most good passers are getting their hands together before the ball crosses the net or about when the ball crosses the net. Okay. If you wait to the last second to put your hands together, you're not going to have a steady, strong built platform. Okay. Uh, Imagine if we were just talking about like, firearms or anything with accuracy, right? If you needed to shoot somebody with a water gun, you wouldn't like hold the water gun like this and then kabah, 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 and then aim it. You would actually aim and hold at your target. And that's what we want to do with our platform. So the sooner that you can build your angle and build your platform, once you track the ball, the better your passing is going to be. Okay, so Logan's going to try to pass here, up and over to my right. That's getting the ball about five, six, seven feet above the top of the antenna, which means... I have the option to spike. Okay, so this is a great drill that you guys can do at home and it's still competitive. Go out with your players before you play the match and say, hey, you guys, you feel warm, you feel ready to jump. Okay, let's get into this drill, right? The first touch can be anything. The second two must be a single hand. And if you can keep that format or that version of passing where it's high enough and you can attack well enough, then you're going to have a good pass. Okay. So good, easy drill for you there. And uh, it's one of the many that are included in our serve receive course. I think I skipped, I think I went and, and jumped around a little bit because that's a three point pass. Okay. Now stop sharing for a second. Okay. A three point pass is able to attack it. A two point pass means that I can set it, but I'm probably on the move. Um, I can get there in a balanced way, but it's not exactly where I want it. It's not in front of me in the front 10 feet of the court. It's not optionable for the person to be able to hit. So that would be a two point pass. Okay. A one point pass means my setter can get there, but we're really out of system. He's in the back half of the court. He has to really run to the ball uh, and he's barely keeping it alive. And a zero point pass is going to be if you overpass or you get aced. Okay. So for our elite players, what we do with them is we say, you're going to measure your, you're going to stat your last 100 passes. And I want you guys to do this at home. If this is the only video you watch from us, go today If you don't have film, start filming your matches. If you do, look at your last 100 passes, write a date on your whiteboard and say, on this date, I was this level of a passer because we take all of the passing attempts 
and we sum up the number of points we got and we divide the number of the number of points by the number of passes. So divide the number of points you got by 100 and that should give you um, your stat right there. I think I did that right. Okay. And then you have passing stats and then at least you have a baseline. So you know where to go. And then you could jump into our serve receive course. You could do all of the drills for 30 days. You can take your video and you can submit it to our coaches in our private community on our app. And then we will help you from a technical standpoint about what's going wrong in your matches, in your passes and taking a look at it. Okay. <clears throat> One way that we do that. So I'm just going to give you this last little glimpse on the inside of our course here. Okay. So again, this comes from uh, the Better at Beach online app. You can also use the desktop version, but the links are around this video, especially on YouTube. You can download the app right now, Better at Beach online, the app. And I want you guys to remember that just by downloading that, you're going to get a free 10-day course. We're going to take you through all of a, a single lesson and a single drill from every one of our skill strategy and workout programs. Okay. And that'll be a, a good introduction for you. And it's 10 days of lessons and drills that you can do at home. So if you just download the better at beach online app right now, that is accessible for you. And I encourage you to do it. It also comes with three or sorry, 36 of our best beach volleyball drills, a little drill book that you can print out and uh, three free beach volleyball specific workouts. All right now, <clears throat> um, basic passing analysis. Okay, how do we actually take a look at our passing? All right, well, should be pretty easy when you are doing this. Okay, basic serve receive footwork. Okay. Film review, we've got uh, serve, receive, footwork, where to pass and how high, pre-serve, receive routine. We develop all of this, okay? But, sorry, uh, I'm losing my spot here. There is simple recordings that you can do, okay? Very simple pre-testing recordings. Here it is. And this is what our members go through in the beginning, okay? What we want is we wanna get an initial look at our passing. So if you guys are at home and you're thinking, oh, how do I look at my passing? Okay, number one, the best way to watch volleyball overall is to position your camera in the back middle of the court, okay? Back middle, as high as you can, so you get as good a view. But if you're looking at certain aspects of your jump technique or your passing technique, this is the best view from slightly in front of you and off the side of the court. Okay, so this is Joe Kramer. She actually used to run our complete player program online. Uh, she's now coaching college. Congratulations, Joe. But this is an example of some of the passing that we want to be able to do. Now, if you notice, okay, she keeps her hands way out in front of her. All right. Her hands are away from her hips. And we're just getting a recording of this. Okay. Once that's recorded, if you do this exact same thing, you can upload it to our community in our app. And then we're going to say like, hey, your hands aren't coming together enough. Hey, your chest is poking out too much. You're not keeping that space from your hands to your hips. Okay. So if you want to get started on this, if you think that you're going to take the course, you're going to sign up for our program for a little bit. All you need to do is get out to a court, have somebody bowl you some free balls and then serve you some float serves because there's a difference in bold free balls, serve float serves and down balls. Okay. And we can help you fix your passing just through this way, because you would take this video and you would upload it to our community. And then our coaches within 24 hours will be there to make sure that we are giving you the feedback that you need. And that's how our online program and our app works. If you sign up for the full membership. Okay. So I just want to take a little bit of extra time here to look at some serve receive from some pros. And then if you're here live, we're going to open up a little bit of a Q&A and um, 
that's it. And then we'll call it a day. Okay. So we're going to take a look at some of our pro service teams and we're just going to talk about what it is they're doing well. Okay. So this is just a basic serve receive drill, easy three or four person drill that you're looking at. Okay. And Logan's standing in the way, so we don't have a good look at that, but he's in that quarter squat. Okay. He likes to have his hands ready. I would say that most people, we should encourage you to keep your hands in front of you just to encourage that initial spacing. Logan does a great job with this anyway, but he gets his hands way out, okay? So this is one of these where his feet are in position, hands are together right now, his hands are together. So just as the ball's crossing the net, hands get together, okay? And then this is one of those where he uses a little bit of arms, okay? And there's really no legs in there, all right? He passes off the inside part of his shoulder. It's high enough. Leela could hit that if he wants to. And then we go in for an attack. All right. Now, if we look at Kyle Friend, okay, he's in this nice same thing, athletic posture, takes the initial step to the ball. The ball's about 10 feet away from him, and his hands get together and built. Okay. And he got beat up by this a little bit, right? The ball floated in on him, but... The good thing is, because he's a pro, right, he kept a lot of space because now you can see that he's getting jammed late, but he kept his hands away from his body early enough so that when he does end up in this compromised position, it still ends up being an okay pass. Gets it to the exact right spot. He passed it to his uh, one o'clock, 30 degrees off his inside body, and then he can go in and hit it. Okay. This is a good side shuffle. By Logan right here, okay? Side shuffle, hands out and away. Yes, he built in the middle of his body. Most elite passers do, even though they might not say it. Most build in the middle of your body or somewhere between your shoulder girdle, okay? And then he slides that out, creating a nice shoulder dip and an angle. And because of that great serve, he ends up a little bit off balance. This is what we want to try to prevent, sliding through the pass if we can, We'd like to make sure that our feet are stable and we're there, but he gets that ball to the inside of the court and we can run a nice offense. Okay. Kyle friend, I want you to look at how early his hands get together. Boom. Together. Now, just as the ball's crossing the net, hands are together. He's in that nice athletic position. Hands are away. And look at this. We don't shank balls guys, because we build together and then move out. We shank balls because we didn't create an angle with our shoulders that made the ball go forward. So for all those coaches out there who do this demo and say, oh, when you turn like this, it's because your hands were together and that's why the ball went that way. That is not the case. Case is, did you create an angle? Because I can rotate from here and the ball's not gonna go off of that because I've created an angle, I've hit it here, okay? So I can dip that shoulder and then go there. And I can do that from the middle. I can create a little pendulum so long as I keep my angle facing forward. All right. The shanks that happen off the back are not because I built my hands in the middle. They're because I didn't have my angle facing forward when I contacted it. And if we take a look at some of the best passers in the country right here, okay, hands are together now. Then he slides his platform with his hands together through that pass Holds through the pass, so the ball is now five, six feet away from, yeah, about five feet away from him before he even lets his hands go. They didn't split or separate on contact, and he passed over to his, about his uh, one o'clock, and then I can attack that. Oh, I should have attacked that, and we managed to get something out of it. Okay, Logan here. Passing, hands are together, nice and early. He built in the middle, they slid outside, but he kept that shoulder angle, okay? And while he had to jump at the end, okay, he doesn't quite get fully extended. We want to make sure that those feet are trying to be in the sand as much as possible so that we can be nice and stable. Last little look at this. Okay, again, hands built kind of between his knees, 
nice and early, right? Just as the ball's crossing the net, hands are together, slides through it, a little bit of a jump. Like to be a little bit more stable. And then we go in and we can attack that. Same thing with Kyle, amazing passer, played pro indoor for a long time, is a great outside hitter. Look how early his hands are together, centered in front of his body and tracking from there. And this great hollowed out position that he has. Okay. This is so nice to have that hollow position with that rounded upper back. And that allows him the space he needs to adjust his feet. Okay. So that's a lot to fit into an hour, but I want to tell you guys that we have some ways for you to upgrade your passing right now. Okay. Number one, you can take our serve receive course, which I showed you. It's your entire library. Okay. I can share that screen right now. And we have a standalone course that should take about 30 days for you to get through. Okay. The inside of that looks like this. Okay. We just completed that drill or that example video, and then we can go right into the next lesson. Okay. But your full library dashboard, okay, this is just one course. If you look at the library that you would have, okay, as a member, right, we have a Beach 101 Fundamentals. This is one that if you opted in or if you sign into anything on our website or you download the Better Beach online app, you have a 10-day, 10 10-lesson, 10 and 10-drill at-home fundamentals course that you can do. Our library also includes a 21-day mobility and strength foundationing program. Okay, so if you've been out of shape or if you're in a rehab mode or you're in the off-season, this 21-day program is perfect for you. This is our 60-day max vertical for most people who have been out of shape or not in a workout mode, I would recommend that they take the 21-day mobility and build up your strength foundations before jumping into the 60-day max vertical. Okay. Beyond that, we've got a serving masterclass, and this is the one that we're talking about, which is our serve-receive masterclass. Again, it's lengthy. Can you finish all of the videos in one or two days? Yes, but that wouldn't really help you because... As a complete player member, you could take that full course. That means that you get the concept, you understand the lesson, sort of like we did today for a very short amount of time. Okay? And then we'd say, hey, go film this drill. You film that drill, then you post it to our private community in our app, and that's where our coaches go in there and they help you with your passing, with your technique, with your workout technique and your programming and your questions. We're there to answer all of your questions. Okay. So you would take the lesson, you'd watch the video, you would go and you would do some of the at home drills and some of the on court drills and you would film them. And then you would post them right into our private community so that we can help you along the way. Okay. So Serve Receive Masterclass is for sure in there. And if you signed up for this, I know you want to upgrade your passing. This is the way to do it, okay? Beyond that, we also have a 30-day setting blueprint where you can learn how to handset at home and how to fix your bump setting as well. And then we have a Fix Your Arm Swing in 21 Days program. Guys, we have so much, including our Practice Plan Super Pack, which has over 200 volleyball drills and 53 right now complete beach volleyball practice plans. Okay. That's all in your library and it's all included in the app as well. Okay. So, uh, the ways that you can do this, number one, take that 10 day free course, just go ahead and download the app that are at beach online. Okay. But number two, if you want to dive into this serve, receive full course that we have, okay. I've got, Right now, you can get just that course. So just one course, you can get that for $87. All right, I'm going to post it here into our chats. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And for you Facebook people, I'm going to post it right there. Okay. If you're watching this as a recorded webinar, then you can take a look at the links below. So you can get that standalone course. For $87, work through and fix your serve, receive, and your passing with our help and with us watching you, okay? The next link that I'm going to give you, okay, you can try our complete player program, which gives you access to all of these courses, 
all of the workout programs and you get one live Q and a group meeting with our coaching staff every week. So that means that you can take the course, you can post your videos, right? And then you can go in and talk with a coach. And then we do stuff like this where we actually screen share and we show the video analysis, okay? And we get to look at your film. So if you're in our community, you get to post at least a minute of film a day. You can edit it however you want. And then we're gonna look at your skills. We're gonna look at your strategy. And then if you come to the meeting because you signed up for the full year, which is 399, okay? Then you can develop your game with pro players, pro coaches, national team coaches watching you every step of the way. This is something that I absolutely needed, wanted, wish I had in my career. And instead I just built it because it didn't exist. So the second link is the 399 for the year. Okay. And um, sorry, 399 for the year. That includes one, a 15% discount on every single one of our three-day camps and seven-day camps. We're going to Austin. We're going to Cincinnati. We're going to Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, We're going to Florida. We're going to Miami, St. Pete Beach, and we're going to the Dominican Republic. So if you think that you're signing up for that camp, you can save 15% on that and get a year of unlimited video analysis and coursework and strategy and workout programs for that. Okay. And if courses, just means the basic means the live group, what we know, okay, that is for the next 30 days. So for $1 for the next 30 days, that'll roll you into our 39 a month membership, but you can try all of our courses and workout programs right now for $1. And I'm going to include that link on our Facebook group. I'm going to include that link below our webinar page, and I'm going to include it for our YouTube. Okay. That is right there. So there are three ways that you could get busy with us, <laughs> right? One of them is trying it out without group meetings, but still include the video analysis and all of the courses and all of the workout programs, okay? You get $1 for 30 days, and that turns into just 39 a month for all of that video analysis from all of these coaches, and you can fix your passing finally, and you can see how we can improve and help you improve and get you to that next level over time. You can sign up for the full year, which is going to be 15% discount on all of our camps. It includes every single course and workout program that we have. And you get to meet with us live every week. So we have one hour meeting during the days on Wednesdays and you get invited to those and we get to discuss and talk shop and actually screen share your video so that we can help you upgrade your passing or whatever skill you're working on. Okay. Or if you just want to take that standalone course and you're saying like, no, I'm here just to fix my passing. Okay, we've got that for you too. You can get our standalone passing course, which is a 30-day program with all of the drills, all of the lessons that you need. Okay, Uh, you can get that for $87. I'm going to include that link below as well. So you've got three options to start working with us. All right, I've included all of the links. And that's it. Of course, we always have our camps. You can always come in person, work with us in camps. I know it's not always possible. So like our whole mission, our whole goal is to bring high level coaching to places where it's not or where it's just difficult to find. All right. So if you haven't been able to find a coach wherever you are or you can't find easy answers, that's our whole mission. That's why we run these three day camps in multiple cities, in multiple countries. We try to make fun, engaging environments, but we are intense. We don't run these two hour clinics, right? When you come to work with us, <laughs> you come to work with us. Um, our three day camps are intense. You know, it's two eight hour sessions and one six hour session in three days. So it's a lot, a lot of reps and personal work. Okay. But if you can't come to those, if you can't make it, if we don't have one scheduled with you, well, how do you improve? Here it is. 
silver platter, right? Send us your video. We will help you get better. We'll help you get to the next level. For all of us, it's something that we wish we had or wish was accessible from somebody high level who has been there, who's been on the ABP, who's competed on the FIVB and works at the highest level. How do I find that person that I trust? Hopefully you guys trust us with Better at Beach. I invite you to use those courses. I invite you to join our membership. And if you're ever interested, I'll include one more link. If you don't want to take any of those courses or if you don't want to sign up for a standalone course or a membership, you could always go to betteratbeach.com forward slash film session. And I'm taking a limited number of people right now. I'm available to take these private video analysis lessons. So if you check out betteratbeach.com forward slash film session, you can work with me one-on-one. We will meet just like we're doing right now, except you'll be able to talk to me a whole lot more. All right. And we'll take a look at your passing breakdown. Uh, We'll take a look at your setting breakdown, your strategy. And I'll tell you from experience, the most influential hours I've ever had as a player for my own career were the times when I actually was sitting on a couch or in a hotel room with a coach watching video and saying, I just want your brain. I want you to show me where I am, where I'm not, and just compare me to the world's best players and what we're teaching them, right? So film work is absolutely everything. You can ask anyone in any sports that film is how you get it done, okay? So we've got that course for you. We've got a lot of courses for you in our full membership. And if you do want, you can always come to a camp Okay, but you might as well sign up for the membership, get a 15% discount on that camp, right? Uh, Or if you just want to work with me one-on-one, you can head to betterbeach.com forward slash film session. I've included all the links around the video. And starting now, this video is going to end, but I do want to take the time with the people who have attended live to this filming, okay? We are going to do a little bit of Q&A. So thank you guys so much for attending live. We're doing this every Wednesday, every first Wednesday of every month. We're going to have a different lesson. So we're going to have passing, setting, arm swing, attacking, uh, and offensive design. We're also going to have defense. We're going to have coaching for volleyball, uh, how to work out for volleyball, as well as the Ten Commandments of the Vertical Jump. And we've got a few other webinars planned, but ways to stay in touch or make sure that you're on our email list at betterbeach.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to us on Instagram, and join our Facebook group where we have FIVB and USAV and USAV and ABP referees who are always answering rule questions. If you're having discussions or arguments about rules with your friends, head to that Facebook group, Volleyball Tips for Coaches, Players, and Parents, okay, by Better at Beach, and we have FIVB refs like directors of referee education who are answering all of those questions. They just volunteer their own time to clarify all of those rules. So it's a very good Facebook group to be in and uh, we keep it really positive and really cool. Right. And then if you want to get into the next level of the community, then you sign up for that membership and then you can talk to us and submit your videos so that we can help you out from the coursework. So I hope you guys enjoyed this webinar. Thank you for coming to the training. Very much appreciate you. If there's any way that we can help with anything, let us know. If you want us to run a camp in your town or at your court, let us know. Get in touch. We're available and we can schedule it. But take a look at betterbeach.com forward slash camps first to make sure we're not coming to your town because we have more than 50 camps planned in the next 12 months. And we're probably going to beat that because we've got a number of fantastic coaches who love coaching have done it at a high level and have competed at a high level at the same time. So we're trying to bring great volleyball knowledge to anywhere where there is not or where it's lacking. And uh, I hope we can do that. And I hope we've done that so far for you. So thank you for listening. And uh, if you are here for the live recording, we are going to get into this live Q and A. If you're watching this, the recorded version, take a look at one of those options underneath this video and you will be able to join the serve receive masterclass sign up for the entire program right for one dollar for 30 days and then 39 a month after that 
That does not include the live meetings. You could sign up for the full year where you get the live meetings for $3.99, and that includes all of our courses and programs. Or you could check out betterbeach.com forward slash film session. And if I have any availability when you're watching this, then you can sign up for a one-on-one sessions with me where we can work on your game together. All right. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the sand. Later. Time for Q&A if you guys are here live. So I think Maureen is going to try to help me out here. And I want to hear any questions about Serve Receive that you guys might have. So let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm checking the Facebook comments. Okay. Don't really see any right now, but I'm going to go through the YouTube comments. Okay. Sir Fantasy Stats Guru. Do you recommend standing in a different stance from the back line against a jump server versus a float server? My response to that, so do do I change my depth based on who's serving me? I wouldn't make it as blanketed as jump server or float server. I would say, where does this person serves land? So if it's windy, if there's wind in my face, I'm going to, yeah, take half a step back in serve receive. If there's wind behind me and it's going to pull that ball forward, it's going to make it fall in front of me. Yes, I'm going to start half a step forward to get that beat. If I think that somebody can't quite reach me, I'm also going to step up, right? Or if I think that all of their serves just always end up in the back quarter of the court, I can safely take half a step forward or sorry, half a step backwards to plan that out. So I don't, um, Sir Fantasy Stats Guru, I don't plan it based on if they're jump serving or if they're float serving. Really, I'm getting a vibe for how and where are their serves landing and crossing me and how is the wind affecting it? And so that's how I do it. Okay. Do, do, do. <laughs> you are the reason Sean Cook is so good at the knuckle set. Uh, I don't believe that. He's a pretty crazy athlete. We just uh, gave him a chance to expose it in the preseason. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I'm just scrolling through on our YouTube channel to see if you guys have any questions. Okay. Curling says a quick rule question. If a ball is killed, hits the sand, and then a player, the hitter touches the net. Is that a net fault or is the ball or play dead? The first whistle to blow ends the point. So the first thing that ends the point is when that hitter spikes it and it touches the sand. That means that the ball, the point has ended and then there's a net touch. Okay. Well, the point was over, right? So that means that Um, there's no like momentum rule or anything. If the ball went down and then there was a net, then the ball is down. It's a spike for a kill. Okay. If that person touched the net before the ball bounced, then the net or the violation is the first whistle. So that's how it's going to look from there. All right. Hope that helps curling. All right. Any other questions? from our audience, either on YouTube or on Facebook. I'm trying to look in the chat and see if you guys want to ask any of those questions. If not, uh, it seems like I may have done my job and answered all of your serve receive questions. Okay. It sounds like we are all set, all questions answered. We don't have this live Q&A. Here's what I want you guys to remember. First Wednesday of every month, we're going to do a little little lesson like this. I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be free on our Facebook group and for our YouTube audience and on Instagram. The only problem with Instagram is that you guys can't do the screen share when we're doing the video analysis. So I want you to be aware of that. If there's any way we can help, if you want us to run a camp in your neighborhood or at your court, get in touch. Just email support at better at beach.com. If you want to work with me one-on-one doing video analysis, film session, and any recommendations for your volleyball career skills or workout programs, head to better at beach.com forward slash film session. 
the links around this video and that we've posted in the comments, okay, you can either sign up for the Serve Receive class, the Serve Receive course, which takes about 30 days to get through if you do it the right way, okay, that's for $87. You could sign up for our membership, which is $1 for the first 30 days and then $39 a month after that, okay, you could sign up for that for $1, right, and that does not include the live meetings, but it does include all of our courses, Okay. And if you want to sign up for a full year and commit, then you're going to get this coach onboarding call uh, where we're going to help you set your goals. You're going to get access to every course and every workout program, and you're going to get 15% discount on any in-person camps or trainings with us. Or you can just head on over to our YouTube channel and consume as much as you can consume um, without the personal coaching. But we've Got the answers for you. If you want to get better at beach volleyball, we're here for you and here to help and here to run great programs. And uh, that's it. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.